Hey, hey, welcome back to my channel. Today I'll be showing you how to make delicious, low carb, low calorie french fries that are just going to blow your mind. They'll become your new favorite side dish, but you won't believe how healthy they are. Say hello to your new best friend, jicama fries. These spicy, crunchy fries are just what you need if you're looking to get away from fried foods and have a major craving for anything salty like yours truly, and they are surprisingly good for you. I'll be showing you how to make them in the oven or in the air fryer so you have options to get the crispy fries of your dreams. I know, I know. You're excited and you should be. So let's dive into the nitty gritty of how to make these fries. So first up, you're going to want to grab your jicama. Depending on where you live, it can be tricky to find at the grocery store, but you can usually find it in the produce section, sometimes with the other refrigerated root vegetables such as turnips and celery root, and sometimes it's in the international produce aisle along with daikon radish and bean sprouts. You'll basically be looking for a light brown root vegetable that's about the size of a sweet potato, but round like a turnip. You'll want to peel your jicama first. This can be a little bit tricky at first since the outside of it is very tough. It's kind of similar to peeling a rutabaga. It has this very tough outside texture that is hard to peel into, but once you make contact with the inner part that you'll be eating, it goes a lot more smoothly. So carefully peel your jicama. Patience is key here. Then cut into half inch thick pieces that resemble french fries. Now, making jicama fries is quite different from making potato fries because we have to perform an extra step to make sure that they get nice and crispy. And this applies whether you're baking them in the oven or throwing them in the air fryer. You're going to want to boil them in a bowl of water first to pre-cook them and get rid of any extra starch. They will remain a bit crispy on the inside even after you bake or air fry them just because of jicama's natural texture, so boiling them beforehand will help to get them tender before they go into the oven and crisp up. Once you have your jicama peeled and cut into fries, go ahead and add them to a large bowl of water and microwave them for 10 minutes. You can also boil them in a pot of water on the stove. Once that's done, drain and rinse them really well just to get rid of any extra remaining starch. From there, you'll want to dry them off as best you can with a clean kitchen towel or you can use paper towels to do this. They should start drying on their own once drained because they'll be hot, but you want the fries to be as dry as possible to ensure the oil and spices really stick to them, so I lightly dry them off a bit more with a clean towel. You also want them to be dry to avoid the fries turning soggy while cooking. Once you've got your fries dried off, you'll add one tablespoon of olive oil or any other neutral cooking oil. Then you will add half a teaspoon each of paprika, chili powder, garlic powder, and salt. You can feel free to switch up the spice combination here, but this is my basic, mildly spicy spice blend for those of you looking for a kick. You can even just season with regular old salt and pepper if you'd like, but what's the fun in that? Now, whether you are cooking in the air fryer or oven, you will be following all of the steps I just showed you leading up to cooking them. Let me walk you through each cooking technique. If you're using the oven, you will be preheating to 425 degrees. Line a baking sheet with parchment paper, then add your fries in a single layer, making sure not to overcrowd the pan or they will let off too much steam and become soggy. Depending on the size jicama you use, you may need to do this in two batches, which I know is super annoying, but you gotta trust me on this. It's worth the extra effort. Once you have the fries ready to go, pop them into the oven for 15 minutes, then flip them and cook them another 15 minutes. I know 30 minutes is a long time in comparison to oven fries, but they do need that extra bit of time to crisp up. Once your fries are done cooking, serve them with your favorite dipping sauce and enjoy. Now, you will save a little bit of time using the air fryer, so I provided this option as well for those of you who are as obsessed with this appliance as I am. The air fryer is a real game changer for things like homemade fries, chicken nuggets, and chicken wings, and I just don't think I'll ever go back to using the oven for these types of foods. It really does give you that fried food feeling without the guilt of deep frying something. Not to mention the stink of the deep fryer, it takes like five days to rid your house of frying oil, and trust me when I say I'm not here for that. So. If you're taking the air fryer route, be sure to preheat your air fryer to 400 degrees for 10 minutes. You want it nice and hot for when you add your fries. Once you've got the fries all ready and tossed in oil and spices, you'll add them in a single layer, again, not crowding your air fryer, and cook for 15 minutes for the one side. You'll then flip and cook another 10 minutes. With the air fryer, you save five minutes versus using the oven, so that's handy. I know it's only a small win, but it is what it is. Whichever method you pick, I guarantee that you're gonna love these awesome low-carb fries, and you're gonna wanna make them over and over again. Serve them with ketchup or whatever your favorite dip happens to be, and that's all there really is to it. You can store the leftover fries in the fridge for up to five days too. When reheating, I recommend heating again in the oven for five to 10 minutes until they crisp up again. The inside texture will always be a bit more crispy than you're used to with regular French fries, but they really are an awesome healthy side if you're looking to switch things up and still satisfy your craving for something salty. I've linked to this recipe below this video, and you can find more healthy side dishes linked to as well in case you need some more healthy meal inspiration. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe to my channel and I can't wait to see you in the next video.